welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. My name is Lucy Aida. Today I'm going to do a painting, one of my original paintings that I call Adirondack Love Seat. It's a double Adirondack chair and it is a very basic beginner painting. So my beginner students and anybody that wants to follow me can um, learn the feel of the oil paint, okay? So first thing I have done is I transferred a pattern of a chair. Now, uh, you can get this right off the internet, you can trace it, and then you can uh, transfer it onto your um, canvas. Today I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas panel, a Wilson Bickford canvas panel, and you can see I've already transferred it. My pattern is on, and I used a, a very, very good transfer paper. This is my favorite transfer paper. It comes out very dark, it's easy to use. Um, this is Americana transfer paper, and I um, put my pattern on top of the transfer paper, I took a stylus and I traced it. Very, very easy, okay? Um, this is a freestyle painting, so the chair does not have to be straight. You don't have to get a ruler, try to get the uh, planks of the wood straight or anything. You just uh, put it on there and kind of wing it a bit like I'm going to today, okay? After we're done painting, I'm going to use a uh, craft knife to lift off the paint. All right, so let's get started painting. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more while I'm painting the background. There's quite a bit of, uh, of uh, paint to put on this canvas today, okay? Here we go. Um, I'm going to be starting with ultramarine blue. And I have already put some uh, white, uh, titanium white paint on the background, okay, which is a Wilson uh, Bickford um, fast flow white to make the paint go on smoother. All right, so here we go, right into the titanium white. And didn't matter where I start, I'm just starting from the top down and I'm doing a crisscross motion or an X. And you can see how smooth that paint is going on. I'm going to start doing a, a dark color and I'm going to move down to lighter blues as I come closer to the horizon. So that will help the back look as if it's in the distance. So if you're looking at it, you'll see kind of a background and foreground. Now, the back paint, the uh, fast flow, is starting to pick up in the blue. And you can see that it's darker and getting lighter. And that's what we want. We want this artsy kind of look. I'm not going over the same spot more than once or twice. I'm just spreading the paint on. This is a great way for a beginner to start. You'll get the feel of the paint. All right, getting a little more blue. That was um, the ultramarine blue again. Coming up to the corner, I'm using the uh, large flat brush. Again, a Wilson Bickford signature product. I'm certified by Wilson uh, Bickford to teach his methods. And um, I love his products. So uh, even when I teach my own methods, I um, use his, his products. I have a couple of my products, but right now I'm using uh, his paintbrush. Here we go, back into the blue and coming down even more. Now you can see the variation of color as I'm painting and you can see the lines in the paint. If I see any canvas showing through, I'm just coming back and painting over it and you can see light, dark, light, dark and that's what we want. Now, for a beginner painter, you will get the feel of this paint as you're painting. It, by the time you get down here, you're, something will click and you'll say, oh, I get it and you'll understand how the oil paint spreads. I'm not even wiping my brush out, okay? Just letting that white pick up with the blue, and you can see we have darks and lights, and just to give an illusion of some background, some, some cloud formation. We're gonna put some clouds on there too, after we get some of this blue on. And I'll just keep painting down. There we go. More paint. You can see I'm spreading it out, making a chisel edge with the brush, which means that I'm making a sharp edge, okay? And that'll help concentrate the paint into one area before I start spreading it. And also with the chisel edge is how we make straight lines. So if I wanted to come across and do a straight line, if you have a chisel edge, that's how you get a straight line, which we'll be doing as, <clears throat> excuse me, as we get onto the, onto the Adirondack chair. There we go, quite a bit of paint for this. I'm not loading the brush so it's, it's um, full of paint. I'm just gently rubbing the paint in, in a back and forth motion, you can see, just to load the brush. There, we got some nice darks in there now. Now, I'm going to switch colors after I go across a little more. 
And I like the way this is looking. I may even bring some of this dark up here. So what you want is an artsy kind of look. <clears throat> you step back and you'll look at it and if you see a spot you don't like, you just go head back and put a little more paint on. Very easy, easy for anybody. A little X stroke. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to be going into the cerulean blue. I'm not even washing out the brush. Same way, loading both sides of the brush. And I'm going to start putting on the cerulean blue, going right up into the ultramarine so it kind of blends together. Now, you can see in between this chair here, I did cut some out. <clears throat> now, what will happen here is the blue and the background will show through a bit. So I'm going right over the chair. So this way it just kind of shows right through, look a little bit more natural. I'm making sure I get some paint in there. There we go. And that is a really pretty blue. And we'll just kind of mix some in here so we can have a nice color harmony between the blues. And here we go. A little bit more blue. Excuse me. And kind of looking pretty good already. See, I'm, I'm doing it real fast. Now at home, you want to take your time. If you want to do these slow strokes, this way you can get used to it and really get the feel of that paint. Here I am in between again, so I'll get more paint to come in between that chair more. There we go. Still more paint. When I see that I'm picking up too much of the white, I am uh, getting more blue. And I'm going to leave a little bit of spot here. I'm going to put some extra white in there, just so it looks like a little bit of white in the distance. Could be a cloud formation, but like I said, this is a freestyle painting. So you can't make a mistake. Anything you do is fine. Just notice how I'm not staying too um, much in the same spot. And I'll show you what happens if I stay in the same spot. If I stay here in the same spot, I'm not getting the, um, the lining and all that I want. Not exactly lining, but the um, definition of the paint. And I'm smoothing it and I'm blending it. We don't want to blend. We want to make a nice crisscross. We want that real artsy look today. So like I said, this is one of my originals. I was just staying home one night and I said, let me just kind of play around a little. I had extra paint on my palette from another painting. And I said, let me just see what I can come up with. And I thought of doing a chair and looked on the internet, saw this double Adirondack chair and said, oh, let me give that a try. There we go. So see, I'm bringing some blue up for, again for color harmony in the painting to bring it all together. Okay, so that's it for the the blue, I think I'm going to start doing a little bit of the bottom now. Okay, so I'm going to just bring this across so it's a little straight. Now, you could actually put a piece of tape across to make sure your horizon is straight, but for today's show, I'm not going to take that time. I'd rather work with you and so you can see the painting more than me uh, putting tape on right now. I just want to make sure I got in between these, these uh, planks of the chair. And I'm just going to take a paper towel, wipe out my brush just a little bit because I want to go to some white. So you can see all I'm doing is just wiping a little out. Any white that I put on right now will turn blue, but that's okay. It's not going to be the dark blue like I had. So here's some white. I'm just coming in here. I'm going to pick up the blue and that's okay. Just want to get some white in here just so it looks a little bit lighter in a spot there like a little bit of a maybe sun or something showing through. Even though I would probably put a little tint of yellow just for the illusion of it. There we go. So I'm just going to come across here and see if I have a little bit of a horizon. So something that I can go by, a little guide. All right. So what I'd like to do now is across this center, I'd like to put a little bit of an illusion of trees. Uh, without wiping my brush, I'll just wipe it off a little because I'm going to be going into a darker color. I'm going into a little bit of black and I'll take a little bit of brown and I'll see how dark it is. And I'm just using whatever's in the brush. See, I'm kind of moving it together. There was some white in there and it lightened it maybe just enough to put a little bit of trees back there. So with this, all I will do is come in here and I'm just going to tap. We just want a little bit of an illusion. I'm turning the brush back and forth and back and forth and I can always change this later. Right now, I just want to get them in, and this is still the tapes. <laughs> I went paint right over that tape. 
and I'm just going to move it right across. I'm just tapping and moving. Like I said, beginner lesson, we're using just a couple of brushes. This way you can get the feel of them. You can see how I'm using this brush. Now in a different fashion, I'm just using it to tap. And I'm just tapping and turning and tapping and turning. And I think I'll make them a little bigger so they come over the arm of that chair. That might be a little bit easier to see. So this will just be an illusion of a little bit of background trees. See, I'm just picking up some white there and that's fine. Coming right across, I'll come right across here. We're not really sure what's gonna show yet or if I decide to change it as I'm going, but just to let you know, you can see I'm still using the same brush. Here we have a little bit of a tree illusion. Okay, so that'll look like it's far in the background across the, the lake, if that is a lake, <laughs> either way, a body of water, there we go. So hopefully that's a little bit straight. Now. What I'll do is, not even washing the brush out, I'm gonna come back into the ultramarine. And I'm gonna load up the brush, put a little cerulean in there. Now, on the bottom here, I'm going to have a beach. So what I'll do is I'll just come in here and kind of draw in a little bit of where my beach is going to be. So in here will be some water, and in here will be some beach. So I'm going to do the same motion as I did above with the X strokes. Like I said, usually the water would go side to side, but in this case, because we want this artsy look, we're just gonna do these X strokes. So I'm starting out with some dark blue and it still has some of that black in there. I'm just gonna go into cerulean. I'm just gonna mix the colors together just to have it be a different variation from the top to make a, a, different, a different value of blue. So the sky and the water are a little bit different. Now we don't want it too different, but in this case, like I said, we just want to get these nice, pretty colors on. I want you to get used to the brush, to the brush and to the paint. Now, see, I smoothed that out. I'm so used to smoothing water back and forth that I automatically go in smooth water like that. So I'll come back in and I'll put a little bit more paint. I'm going just in both colors right now. And I will come in and I will make that look choppy again, okay? This way that adheres to the, the look of the painting. And getting a little whiter here, and that's fine because now we're getting closer closer to the, uh, the sand area. There we go. So, chop, chop, chop. Making a little choppy water in here. And I think so far it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go back up and put some clouds in there. I wanted to do this portion first because then I'll have to um, wash out my brush since we're gonna be going to straight white. So when you go to a dark color, a lot of times you don't have to wash out your brush. However, when you're going to a light color, you will have to wash your brush. There we go. Now you can see I'm just rubbing a little bit more so when I peel this tape up, there is less showing around the, uh, the chair. I see some white of the canvas, so I'll come back in and that means I need a little more, a little more paint. Okay, that's the tooth of the canvas. I can come in here and just neaten this across a little bit and come across this way, neaten it up a bit. So now I'm using the chisel edge again and I'm neatening. Just going across, it'll look like a little landmass, but I'm still coming back and doing that X stroke. All right, there we go. So now that we have most of the paint on there, I'm just gonna come back to my paper towel again and I will wipe a little bit of this color off. And you can see a lot of it comes off. So I'm just rubbing the brush around, moving it over to another portion of the paper towel there, try to wipe more off. And now I'm going to be going to some brown color. Now, this is, um, sorry, I'm gonna look at my paint and it is the burnt sienna. For some reason, I always say raw sienna. So I'm going to say, uh, make sure that I say right now that it is burnt sienna. Taking some burnt sienna and some white. I wanna make kind of like a beachy color. There we go. See, we got a little bit of a beachy color here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hurry and get some of this on. And see, same stroke, same stroke. There we go. And you can see some of that dark coming out of that, um, that brush. That's fine too. All right, there we go. Dark, dark, dark. I'm just gonna go get in some white there because we don't want this too dark. All right, we just want to get an illusion of the beach. There we go. And you can see still some dark coming out of that brush. That's fine. Going back, getting a little more white can lighten that up a little. I'm going to put a shadow underneath that chair. So we want to not have it too dark so our shadow shows. 
So we have a little bit of this nice color on. And you can see I just went right over, put a little bit more white, and I'm trying to spread it out. Now, if I was taking my time with this, I may not use this much paint, but I'm trying to hurry so I can get this lesson out so at least you can see it today. And here we go. Covering all of the tooth of the canvas, and we have a nice white spot in here, which I actually did by accident today. So it kind of uh, comes underneath the other white part that I put in there. Okay, so there we go. Now. What I would like to do is just come in here and make like a sand edge. So you can see I'm using just a chisel edge. I'm just running some white underneath here. I'm not worried that it's kind of uh, gloppy. We just want to make it look like a little bit of a sand edge. And this will help you as a beginner learn to use the same brush in a couple different ways. Okay, so there we have a little bit of a sand edge. I'll just use up the rest of that paint. Now. I'm just going to wipe out my brush and see if I can get enough out without wipe, without washing it. I'm going to come back into the white. And I just want to come up here and I'm kind of putting some clouds on. This is, would just be a cloud formation. Now you can see I'm just kind of dabbing and moving the paint around on the chisel edge of the brush. Very, very simple way. Now, this would not be good if you had a, a different painting, but in this case, because we're doing this um, X stroke artsy look, the freestyle, this is a nice way just to be able to get some clouds on, okay? So I'll put a cloud there. Maybe we'll come up here, put another cloud. Then after, I'm going to go right on to my chair. So to make sure you have, um, I have enough time to show you how to get that chair in. Okay, so we have a couple clouds. You can see I'm just roughing up the edge a little. And I think I'll just put one more, just so you can see. We want to try to have uneven numbers for composition. There we go. So just a little, little cloud formation. I'm trying not to make any kind of pattern. And you could work for hours if you wanted trying to get some, some really cool looking clouds in there. I just want to get some white in there and just show you. So there we go. So we have a few clouds in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, my knife and I don't know where I put my knife. I'm so sorry. And let's see. It looks like I misplaced my knife. I'm going to try, no I didn't, it's right here. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to peel up the tape now. Now, sometimes it comes up really easy and sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see if I get lucky or not. And I might be getting lucky so far today and I can do part of it with my nail. If that doesn't work, go back to the knife. So I'm just lifting it. Now you're really gonna see the chair in there now. Okay, so this is, going to be a little time consuming um, to paint, okay? I'm just going to show you the method of it at home. You will take your time and you'll do a nice job on your Adirondack chair. And like I said, you can go right on the internet. You can print out a picture. If you don't want to do a double Adirondack chair, you can do a single one. I, I saw a lot of um, pictures of the single ones and I said, oh, I'd love to do something different. So when I saw this double one, I said, let me try the double one. The other thing that you can do is if you do not want to do this in such a big canvas, I like to do big canvases for the show. This way it's um, you know, easier to see. You can shrink it down on a photocopier and you can do whatever size you like. All right, so still have a little bit more tape to go. And let's see what we have here. Sometimes it's easy to do, sometimes it isn't. And not have any problem, but there is quite a bit of tape on there. And there we go. So you can see this chair underneath it. And it looks pretty good. Now, you also will be able to see that there isn't straight lines like a normal Adirondack chair would have, okay? Um, I didn't fuss with it much when I was doing it, all right? I, um, I just wanted to get it on there for the lesson and to show you that it does not have to be straight. Of course, if you want to get some drawing tools out there, uh, you can do that too, if you really want it straight. But in this case, because the whole background, the whole, uh, the whole painting is in this choppy painting fashion, the freestyle, it probably would look better if it wasn't straight. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna come back to my, my palette of paint and going to go to a smaller brush now. So now, I'm going to use another Wilson Bickford product. Sorry, I just dropped my knife. I'm using the uh, number six small flat brush. I'm going to use a little bit of my medium 
which is some oils that I use uh, to help loosen up the paint. And I'm just gonna drop a couple drops. It's gonna move around a bit, so I'm just gonna kinda anchor it with my other paint on the palette there, because I have no medium underneath. Now, I'm just dipping my brush in this medium, and here we go. I'm just gonna come into my white paint. And I'm going to start putting on some nice white paint on here. So really what this chair is, is uh, three different values of gray and white, okay? The values of gray. So I'll use a dark gray, a light gray, a mid-tone gray. And see, I'm just gonna paint right over these lines. Just wanna get some paint on there. For time reasons, I just want to uh, make sure you get to see how to do the whole lesson so you can finish it at home. Even if I don't get to finish, at least you'll see which way we're going with this. There we go, and there's a little brown in the paint, and that's okay, because we're gonna be putting in shadows. So, here we go, I'm coming up in between here, getting on some white paint. This way, it's all white. I'll try to be a little neater in here. We will, if we pick up a little blue from the background, that's okay, because I did also add a little blue in, in the um, chair planks. There we go. So, I'm getting a little sloppy there and mostly have it covered with paint. Okay, so let's get some in here, and you can see I'm just going across the way that the, the angles are, up and down, side to side. You can see the back of the chair, where it's sitting. Um, of course, now I just noticed a, a really big mistake that I made. This chair would be sitting in the water, okay? So either I would have to put sand here or I would have to make it look like the chair is supposed to be in the water. <laughs> I just noticed that. So, but that's okay. That's what happens. We can fix that up. I'm taking my white. I'm just coming over to this gray that I already had. And here's how we make this illusion of shadows. I could just come in underneath the chair so it looks like a shadow on the bottom, and I have a picture on the side. I'm just kind of referring to that. I can come in across the top a little, and this is how the chair will look a little bit three-dimensional. Again, it does not have to be neat. The rest of the painting is kind of choppy. I can come across the top here, just dab a little paint on the top of the chair. This way we get some nice, some darks in there, and you'll see the chair start look a little bit better after I get some of this in also cross this bottom. Now, like I said, at home when you're doing it, you'll take your time. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, I'm, I'm actually painting a little crooked there. That's okay. You'll see the chair starting to come to life a little bit. Once I get on some of these colors, if you have a mall stick, which is a stick to help lay across the um, easel to help you do a little bit of straighter lines, that's good. You can use one of those to try to help your lines be straighter. But you can see, just by putting in some gray, you can see that difference. So I'm going to have to come in and uh, change this a little bit because I can see that my chair is floating in the water. So I'm just going to come put some lines in the boards. Okay, we'll get some lines in there. There we go. So it's starting to come to life a little bit. I can see I have a lot of fixing up to do, but just so you can see. Now, as you're painting at home, what you'll do is you'll take white paint and you can go around and cover all of the lines that you had on there originally from the graphite paper, okay? I'm not going to have the time to do that, but if you see, I can just move the paint. You can see how I just covered that up. You can move the paint and you can cover those lines. I just wanna show you that we're gonna be putting in darks and lights to get an illusion of shadows in the chair, okay? So I'm gonna put a couple more. Oops, and I just got a big glob of paint on there. Going to wipe that off, accidentally stuck it in there. But what I'd like to do is I'm going to go back to my big brush right now and back to my brown, okay, and a little bit of white. And I'm going to bring this over. Now you can see I'll pick up some of that blue, but because I want this chair to look like it is in the sand and not floating in the water, I'm just gonna bring the sand right up. See how easy that was to fix? There we go, just bringing it right up. So this will come all the way up. Now the chair looks like it's sitting at the edge. Okay, instead of the, uh, the end of the chair floating in the water there, which of course some people do put their chair right in the water, so it's not, not that it's inaccurate, I just thought it would look better that way, okay? So I'm gonna move this up, this way the chair is at the edge of the water, okay? 
And there we go. I'm going to move this up too. Fill this in. So now we have our sand getting higher. We're going to have less water, more sand. And I added a darker color. This way it looks like a shadow already. And I'll move this right over and I can just redo the top of my water. There we go. Okay, so now the chair is in the sand. And that was where I wanted it in my original painting. Okay, any little smudges and all, I can come back and fix. So I'll come back and I will wipe off my brush again. I'll go back to the white and I'll lay the edge back on again. See, and that's how you learn sometimes. You make a little a little boo-boo. It's not really a mistake, but a boo-boo. And then you can just kind of come back in and I think that's better now. Now I have the edge of the water, okay? I would work longer on the chair and uh, neaten that up and put in a darker couple uh, strokes of dark gray, get rid of some of those lines. Um, for now, I just want to show you how I'm putting a shadow in. I wiped out my brush and here I go. I'm going into Van Dyke Brown, which is a darker brown. Now, I like to come underneath the chair and just put some dark brown in just so it looks like there is a little bit of a shadow back there. Darker than the, um, the brown I already had, okay? So this kind of makes it look like there is a shadow. There we go, right into the Van Dyke Brown. Put some brown over here. There we go. So now underneath we have a nice shadow. Well, I hope that at least the lesson came through. Even though I didn't have time to fuss much with the chair, um, I think that hopefully you understand um, the direction I'm going with it. So I, I would come back, I have blue in here, but I would come back with a little bit of a, a darker gray and I would come back in and put some lining in and lining and go over some of these lines and in between. And that's how you'll get your look of a really nice Adirondack chair. Neaten up the edges a little. See, I got some brown in there, that's okay. So if you can see what I'm doing, this is the best way just to learn to, to quickly uh, do a nice chair, okay? And I could work on that more, but in the meantime, I think that, uh, I think the lesson came across. A little sloppy, but it came across. And that's my main goal here, is to show you how to get started painting so you can paint at home. And there we go, a little bit more shadow. All right, so there we have it. So what I can show you for one minute, while well, I have one minute left, is I wanted to show you my uh, cleaning system. And this bucket has a screen in it. It's easy to take out and uh, no sharp edges. It's not made of chicken wire. It's a like a sifter, okay? And it goes in the bucket. And the reason why it sits high in the bucket is so you can fill the bottom up to here with the thinner. And then when you clean your brushes, You'll dip, wipe, dip, wipe a couple times. Then you swish your brush back and forth. Very gentle on your brushes. Doesn't have big holes, so your brushes, uh, brush uh, bristles split and all. And um, I use this when I paint in all my classes, all my videos, and uh, my students just love them, okay? So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I um, hope that this helps you at least get started. If you have any questions, you can contact me. You can write to me in my email. That might be the quickest way to get me at painted, the number four, letter U, by Lucy at yahoo.com. And you can come on Facebook, join my group, and you can uh, look for my products at www.lucysworldofpainting.com. Thanks again.